In the earliest days of 2015, right before the new Jurassic World movie was about to be released, LEGO announced a brand new line for LEGO sets for the brand new movie. And ever since then, we've gotten tons and tons of sets from LEGO revolved around the Jurassic World theme, and it has kind of become a common theme among the fandom and the company in general. However, how good are these sets, actually? Now, among the LEGO community, it is pretty obvious that most people are not humongous fans of the Jurassic World theme, complaining about different things like overpriced sets, sets that nobody really wants, including vehicles over actual structures that are present in the movies, and also making their builds very childish, among other problems. So, I'm here to settle it. How bad is LEGO Jurassic World, if at all? Let's find out. So basically the way this is gonna work is I'm gonna start with some of the good stuff about the theme and then we'll flow into the bad stuff. And then at the end, I'll give my final consensus. So let's get started. So we're gonna start off with the biggest pro of the entire theme in my opinion. And I'm pretty sure most people's opinion, it's already just the source material in general. The fact that we're getting Jurassic Park sets and Jurassic World sets is already a really nice thing in general. And at least we have it above other things, you know? There are tons and tons of other sci-fi themes owned by Universal that don't get sets from LEGO either because they're not age appropriate for LEGO's demographic or just because they're not interesting enough for LEGO to make sets about. So the fact that we're getting them in the first place and they even retrieved the license is already a spectacle on its own. Aside from that, the source material is just great and it's great to have Jurassic World sets, but if you don't think that's a valid opinion, that's totally fine. So an actual valid opinion here is my pro number two, which I think is pretty universal, and that's that the dinosaur models end up turning out really, really good. Like pretty much always these things are just really, really nice looking. And there's always some kind of variety. I mean, the excitement of getting new dinos in Lego is really nice. And I know the two people at Lego do spend a lot of time making these molds for the different dinosaurs. And it's nice to have a good little collection all together. And there's usually something interesting going on. And I do personally think they're a lot cooler than the old Dino 2012 sets I'm used to get. And these ones are just a lot more interesting and it's nice to get these kind of creatures. And overall, just how many we got in general. And then I think pretty much the last pro you can really think of here is just the collectible minifigures in general. Um, they do release a ton of them. I mean, we do have plenty of characters, and on top of that, the builds in general are not always bad. Occasionally, you will get some really, really good bangers, usually from the Jurassic Park side of things, especially with the newest set, the T-Rex breakout set, which I might be reviewing sometime soon, either on this channel or my Le actual LEGO channel. But yeah, that is one of the best sets that has come out in recent memory, and also a couple others that have been pretty, pretty good. Now, let's switch to the cons, because there are plenty of those as well. So the biggest thing, the biggest, biggest factor here is just the pricing. We all understand that LEGO did have to pay for a license, as always, with these kind of license themes. And even though that's understandable, it still is really, really frustrating how high some of these prices can get. Now, on top of the licensing, there's also the fact that the dinosaur molds usually take up a large portion of the set, even though they don't directly take part in the piece count, at least not by a lot. And that's kind of what really influences the price, but still, some of these guys will get really, really bad, especially once you get into the larger territory. And at some point, you really have to think about, is this actually worth it um, for whatever it is you're trying to do, whatever your goal is? I mean, you really have to think about it. It is pretty frustrating how high priced these guys can be for really what isn't a very amazing build, especially when it comes to these vehicle sets or just sets that don't really have heavy cannon to the actual movies. And that's probably the most frustrating part overall. Next up though, another big con is, again, what I just stemmed from, is the non-canon builds. You see a bunch of dumb vehicles, especially when it comes to these non-movie lines. So the ones that happen in between movies, just so LEGO can basically capitalize in between films, um, because obviously there's not a film like every year. And so that's how they end up making money in between the different waves uh, that are directly linked to movies. So. Because of this, you end up with a lot of non-canon, usually really oversized, really dumb looking vehicles overall. And that's kind of where the biggest problem happens with these kind of things. And it's kind of frustrating to be perfectly honest with you, but that is kind of the current state of what's going on right now. And it's kind of unfortunate. Now, although I did list a ton of negative stuff in this video, I want to make a note that I actually really like this theme. I mean, if you checked out my LEGO channel, I do have videos about it. 
and as much as I can defend it, and as much as I don't think a lot of the stuff is worth it, the dinosaurs, I will admit, are the best part, and those really, really make a lot of it worth it, in my personal opinion, and I think it really, really helps to really balance this theme out, and although I don't think it's everybody's cup of tea, if you're just, like, a random guy, and you don't really have much interest in Lego, it's not really for you. I didn't get into Lego because of Jurassic Park. The Jurassic Park set is a byproduct of me liking Lego, not me liking Jurassic Park and then going to Lego. So, so even though I'm giving a thumbs up to this theme, don't take that the wrong way. If you are someone who's highly experienced in Lego, don't think I'm just an idiot who just doesn't know what they're talking about. Um, because I do have experience with Lego, so I'm not saying it's totally worth it for everybody, but I definitely don't think it's an awful theme either, which is why, you know, I made this video. So that's pretty much what I gotta say. I know that I probably haven't persuaded anybody in this video, I basically only listed cons, but that's kind of what I really wanted to say and really just wanted to get out there. Uh, that isn't the worst thing in the world, but they really need to improve on a lot of stuff if they want to be more successful in the future. I will say though, the Dominion line of all things has been very, very good so far. Um, especially when you compare it to the film, it's been very, very nice, and I think um, they've really captured that movie really well in Lego form, and hopefully they can keep it up now that the movies are quote-unquote over uh, with this generation. It will be nice to see them go back and hopefully go back to some Jurassic Park stuff, some early trilogy stuff, because we really need it, and also just focusing on things. Even if you do stick with the Jurassic World canon, there's still so much more you can do. My favorite part about LEGO Jurassic Park and LEGO Jurassic World is being able to build my own theme park, but we really don't have access to that with all these dumb vehicles. Come on, give us more paddocks, like life-size paddocks. Give us more actual facilities and stuff that we can use. But I mean, even if, if you don't want to make us a Jurassic Park Visitor Center, fine. Give us the Innovation Center at the very least. Make, 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 a, make a complex or something. Make the aviary. I mean, there's so much potential, so much stuff you can do, and you could still sell it to little kids. I would, as a kid, I would love to have an aviary <laughs> in my Dr Lego Jurassic Park theme park. Like, it would be so cool. So just make stuff. And I promise you, it will it will impress both the older and younger fans if you just do it. So that's pretty much all I have to say. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know it was kind of weird. I know you were probably expecting something bigger after the big episode 50 of Jurassic World the game. By the way, thank you guys so much for the support on that episode. I already got a couple members on Discord, which is absolutely amazing. And uh, if you want to go and join my Discord, please click on the link. I'll probably link it in the pinned comment. Uh, so go ahead and click on the link. You can join it or my Instagram, of course. Um, if you can follow me there, that'd be perfect. Um, and I will be active on both of those platforms throughout, you know, the rest of time, basically. Um, and I'll continue to upload Jurassic World, so nothing is going to get slower. I'm still going to be playing Jurassic World again. Everything is basically the same. Um, and I'm going to continue making a normal, not Jurassic World again video every 10 episodes, basically. Um, so hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you guys next time. This is Jurassic Insider, signing out.